Yo, what is going on, you guys? Bastion YJ here, and I hear my boy Rob. Rob, say hi to those people at home. Hello, people at home that are currently watching this video. That feels good to say because it has been a while. It has been a while since we've been here. It's been a while since I've been on camera as well. It's been about a week and a half since I've been on camera. Uh, but we are back, guys. <laughs> We're back here with uh, Rob. What are, what, are you, what are we looking at? I see a chicken on, on the screen, got, and I want to know why. We got baby. We got baby chicken. We got big chicken. So, uh, I've been, like, the format has been a lot of different decks, you know, Unchained, Rescue Ace, Pearly, Infernoble, stuff like that. Yes. I was getting pretty, like, bored with Pearly, and so I was trying, like, other decks, mm -hmm. and then so I had picked up, you know, the what probably is the best engine Yu-Gi-Oh! right now, I picked Haunted Engine. Yes. And so I was trying Infernoble, but I was getting, like, clapped when I was playing Infernoble. Like, I was I was going, I was getting <laughs> destroyed by, like, Droll, and, like, the, like sometimes the deck just does that. So I was, like, I was talking to a friend, I'm like, damn, I don't know what to play. And someone reminded me, it's like, oh, yeah, the Fire King deck is coming out. You know, this guy's a little fire. You need to try it out. I was like, oh. And so I try it. Mm -hmm. And I go, I was, so I tested it uh, at Locals the other day, I think yesterday. And then I went 4 with it. Um, I wanted uh, Fire King. Um, so the deck is super strong, super hell consistent. Yeah. Huh? So yeah, I'm well, undefeated. Hell yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I went 4 out. I played Manadium, <clears throat> um, Sword Soul. Infernoble and Red Dragon Arching, which sounds like off the wall strategies, but with the way the format is, it's like those are what you play when you go to a tournament. You know, I also was testing it. I also played like Pearly. My friend was playing Pearly. I was like beating him consistently. The only matchup I didn't really get to test was the Unchain matchup and the mm -hmm. Rescue Ace matchup. But the Rescue Ace matchup for this deck is actually not that bad. And then the, um, mm -hmm. the Unchain matchup is just the Battle of the Floaters. So, you know, bring your life bus. Mm -hmm. So. But well, I'm gonna get into the profile yeah, here, really quick. pretty free against Unchained. Don't quote me on that one. That's what I hear. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, here, it's it's not bad. It's like I think this deck outfloats Unchained because everything just adds itself back. True. And like with Unchained, you eventually run out of. Stuff. That is crazy. But so for the for the starter, we got Ponix. You know, but this uh, one card starter it gets you to your sanctuary. Sanctuary gets you to Island. Island is the <laughs> diagram for the deck. But this also gets you to the uh, the Salmon Great Rage, the pop card. And then depending on your list, you can also play the Circle of Fire. And then this card has two other effects, which are both broken. When it's destroyed, you add it back during the next standby phase. So it's like a Sinister Serpent. Mm -hmm. So this card, you always have follow-up. And then when a card is, when a, I believe it's when a fire is destroyed, a monster that was originally fire is destroyed, you get to summon it from your hand. So there's okay. certain hands where you can just like destroy something else and then summon this mm -hmm. and then get a search and then like it's a play from there mm -hmm. um then we they bit through kieran mm -hmm. uh this card is like oh crazy like i didn't really thought broken is it destroys a fire in your field or hand and summons its hope and then when it's destroyed you summon a fire from my your, a fire king i believe it's fire king yeah especially on a fire king from your grave and then destroy a card and it's all part of that effect mm -hmm. so there's a lot of cool combos with the king runix which this card's beyond bonkers mm -hmm. um where you summon king runix Send destroy this, and this flips back into either a Ponix or an Arvada, and then you pop a card your opponent controls, or there's certain lines where you just pop your own cards, mm -hmm. um, and this helps you set up for the rank eight. This card is also insane. When a Fire King is destroyed or a monster that was originally fire is destroyed, you summon it from your hand or grave, mm -hmm. and then when it's summoned, it destroys the monster in your hand, field, a face of field, or deck. so. This card cannot get ashed, which have, like two people try to ash it. That was great. Um, and then it also gains uh, some of the attack. So this card with looping with it, Kieran, is how you can kill under four summon. Because mm -hmm. there was a lot of times where I went like card destroy card with Kieran, summon Garunix, Garunix destroy uh, another Kieran, mm -hmm. Kieran summon Arvada, mm -hmm. and then you have these three on board. So it's like. 24, 27 <laughs> plus 12 plus 18. So that's around, I think, 8k damage ish. Mm -hmm. And you just need to have one extra body with that for it to be game. There you go. Um, so the, these are the main core ones. And then I played three Arvada, the oh Sprite Red of the deck. Are those rares? Yo, I happened to own rares. In this. I was going through my bulk Swag. and I was like, yo, Max Ready Fire King? <laughs> um, but this destroys another fire in your field or grave or field or hand. To negate a monster effect so it's great to like a good interruption if your hand is like gas if you have like wanted you can normal summon this and then play around like droll of really effectively mm. um and then when it's destroyed it summons a fire king from your grave but its effects are negated and it's destroyed in the end phase 
So there's a lot of cool plays where you can basically do a resource loop where you loop um, this with Kieran or Kieran with the Arvada and the Arvada summons back Kieran. So <laughs> these can like loop each other to like make your rank 8 plays or make your plays. Because they both special from the graveyard, right? Yeah, they both special from grave. Um, this negates the effects, but if when you're using the level 8, it doesn't matter. Because when you summon a level 8, it's usually getting overlaid for a big, big chicken. So. Big chicken. Let's go. And then this doesn't, uh, Baby Karen doesn't negate the effects, which is really good for when you summon back Arvada or when you summon like Onyx. Mm -hmm. Then what else do we got? And then the last Fire King I played was Barong, which is I think the only like old Fire King we play. Mm -hmm. But this is, um, it searches during the neck, the standby phase after it was destroyed. Mm -hmm. So your main combo in the deck is like, and that's mandatory, Onyx correct? Get yes, I believe so. Nice. Let me see. Yep, add one. Yeah, add one is mandatory. You have to do this. Mm -hmm. Um, so your main play mm -hmm. is like this gets sanctuary. Sanctuary gets the island. Island destroys this. You get the Grunix, right? Mm -hmm. Grunix then destroys Barong in your deck, and then you pass, right? With the other just two spells up, right? And then on your opponent's turn, you add this back off of its own effect, and then Barong searches you Kieran, and then boom, you have the setup for the rank eight on your. And that's you like go. your standard like one card combo. So and playing this is all this the fire you play. You didn't play the the rally. That's the um the spell negate guy, right? Correct. No, yeah. I I wanted I only wanted to play plus one fire king in my deck. So if you looked at it, right, um <laughs> all my all the fire kings I play plus in some uh, in some capacity, right? Like mm -hmm. Ponix is your one card starter. Kieran is the one that lets you play. Grunix gets you anything. Arvada is the negate and a reborn. And Barong is the follow up. The, the Ultra, because uh, it's a spell negate, which is really good. And I believe it summons from the hand. So it's not bad because there's certain combos where you can play Dweller and stuff. Hmm. But I never missed it. And mm -hmm. if it had a good effect, if it had an effect when it was destroyed, I'd probably play one. But since it's kind of just like when you already have every Fire King, I it's the card you search. I didn't want to play it. I wanted to be very like, streamlined and all want to be very consistent. And then there's another engine I played that makes me want to play less of like the bad fire kings because I'm playing this other engine, which mm. I will show in one second. So with the Dio Bellstar engine, I played the Snake Eye engine. Right? Okay. So mm. so this guy, when it's normal special, it switches a level one fire, a hot ponix. Mm. And then when it's on the field, you can send itself mm. and another face of card you control to summon a snake guy from the deck, you summon a flat dragon. Slambering Dragon, when it's sent from the hand or face of field to the grave, it summons two level ones from the deck. We get summoned back chicken and uh, the stink eye ash. Mm -hmm. And then, so that's boom, that's free link fodder. And then the other, it's a good effect going second where it like puts a monster in the spawn trap card zone that's on the field or in the grave. So it's a cool like disruption like, mm -hmm. to not destroy your opponent's stuff. And then the Abel Star is like, you know, part of the wanted engine. So what this engine does, it allows you to end on like Sunlight Wolf SP or Sunlight Wolf IP. And then you add this back off the, what's it called? The Sunlight Wolf. And then on your opponent's turn, you know, you go Kieran destroy this because you're going to like search Kieran off wrong. So then you go Kieran destroy this. Mm. Boom. Summon this guy back. Oh, sorry. Is that of you? Summon this guy back. And then your this guy will summon back Sneak Eye Ash and Ponix. Ponix will search you a uh, something, and then the Snake Ash will also search you. And then you also have, uh, where is it? This guy on the board, and mm. this guy on the board. Right? So you have the Sunlight Wolf, and you have the IP. Mm. And then you just, like, boom, suddenly you have, and then Grunix also triggers. So by playing what is a two-card package, your end board that's usually just a Raigeki will now turn into this. Mm. That's wild. <laughs> just by playing this two-card package. And then the Snake Eye Ash also lets you play a lot of utility because since it's, it searches any level one fire, mm. um, so there's also cool cards in the extra deck that, or the side deck or main deck that you can play that mm. I did not play for this local, but I was telling like Sebastian over the video that I really wish I played like the one Curry Kara in the main deck, mm -hmm. which going forward I might play mm. um, because against Pearly, this just gives you a free out to Noir game one. Mm. So that's something I'm thinking about, but. That might be the That's move. something I don't know. Yeah. But this is all the like engine monsters. Mm. And then, you know, it's a hand trap format. So you got to play a lot. So I played uh, three Nibiru. Because, mm. you know, this is really strong against like all these combo decks. Of course. Three Ash. Because, you know, it's a fire. Ooh. 
It's yeah, the QCR. That's a pretty one. My man. Yes, sir. Um, so <clears throat> it's a fire, and then it's just like the most generic one, and then also you can add it off, off sunlight with, and then droll. Um, and then I'll just show them here. I'll play the impermanences as well. Mm. So twelve hand traps with, uh, with your engine, I think is fine. You can argue to play like instead of playing nib, you can play two uh, Valor instead of nib, which I've seen a lot of in different profiles. I've also seen Fenrir and Rise Harton, and I don't think that's bad. I just think you have the chance to test with Fenrir because that package also lets you make Dweller. Because since you don't, um, you don't really care, you don't really special summon from the extra deck unless you play the Snake Eye package. Mm -hmm. So in theory, you can cut the Snake Eye package mm -hmm. and play like Fenrir Rise Heart and then make Dweller. So that's something to test. I haven't tested it yet. But that's something I might test. Cool. Um, but yeah, like these hand traps are broken. Drawing Manadium is crazy. Drawing Infernal is crazy. Mm. Nabu ring, like, and then just like Imperm is like one of the best like hand traps ever because it doesn't play the talent. Boom. That's the. And then for the spells. So the extra deck is pretty much very flexible. So you can play Prosperity. Mm. Um, and <laughs> it doesn't conflict with this engine, which I think is really like important. Because a lot of people immediately will just go, oh, but you know, when you play the Wanted engine, you want that free bonus draw. But you also have to remember that this card also has another grave effect where you can banish it to search a level one fire. Hmm. So you can banish it from the grave to search Ponix, and then Wanted puts back from the banish or the grave. So you can search Ponix, or you can put this, banish this, or uh, banish this, put the Diabell card to the bottom of the deck, search Ponix, banish this, put this to the bottom of the deck, draw a card. And then suddenly you have two D two wanted original sinful spoil and uh, deal bell star in your deck to for follow, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. just yeah. So this being more copies of this, more copies of your one card combo, mm -hmm. and not blocking your other extra deck is why I play this over like a Nadir Seven, which I think is like really popular in this deck to play Nadir when you don't play the Driver Gate cards. Mm -hmm. um, but the Nadir Servant locks out all your utility because you're trading a Maximus Search. Uh, our Maximus body and an extra search for Ponix versus Prosperity, or Prosperity is going to get you to the Ponix anyway. Right. And you don't, you're not locked out of the extra deck. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't want to play a card that I can't like use my extra deck, but I could just play like Prosperity. Mm -hmm. That that was my take on that. And then boom, two island, uh, two island, best card in Cosmo. Um, <laughs> what's it called? The Dragon Dragonic Diagram of the deck. This card is like, bonkers. Uh, Sanctuary, which is three more copies of Island, but then it also lets you XYZ on your opponent's turn, mm -hmm. which I think is crazy. And then if this card would be, if the Island would be destroyed, you can destroy, I think it's another fire mm -hmm. from your hand or field to, yeah, destroy another fire mm -hmm. from your hand or field to protect it. Um, so so I've, seen five. A few, I've seen a few people cutting down the Sanctuary card to two. How'd you feel? How'd you like it at three? Was it a bit too cloggy um, or was it good? No, it's pretty good. I think that I do see the, the logic of playing two because. You break the way you brick on this deck is when you have too many islands. So I can understand people playing two, but then since this was my first time playing the deck, I wanted to have a consistent way to island. Mm -hmm. And I with the snake eye combo too. So I, I don't know if I'm gonna show the, all the combos here. Um, but I'll, there's certain combos with snake eye aft where you with the two face of cards you send are snake eye aft and the, the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So I'd always want two more in my deck to be able to like do the ranking and the grind. Okay, makes versus, sense. Versus, like, sending it off. Because I didn't play Tenki. Because that card is terrible. Oh, my God. I, my my friends the entire week were like, yo, play Tenki, play Tenki, play Tenki, play Tenki. I did, like... It's not really a starter in game. this deck. Huh? It's not really a starter in this deck. It's a starter no. in the Tri-Brigade version, because you get Fractal. But, it, it's, it, I mean, yeah, it gets you Arvata, in the, but that doesn't, you know, it's not a starter. So the thing is, it gets you Arvada, and it can also get you Barong. So if you open up Tanky Island, you can go Tanky get Barong, Island pop Barong, search Garunix, Garunix sends something else, and then your standby phase you can go Kieran, or you can send like Ponix, mm -hmm. and then standby phase get Kieran. <clears throat> so it's basically another pseudo way to do the combo. Mm -hmm. Um, you just get drolled every time. So <laughs> that's I, like sounds like it. I literally I drew Tanky. Like three games, and then I said, and I went activate tanky because like, like that's the way my hand played out. I'm like, okay, I have to activate tanky. So I activate tanky, get drolled, and I just go ah. I lose that. <laughs> so literally right before the tournament, my deck was 42 cards with two tanky, and I said, yo, screw tanky, I'm taking the crap right out of my deck, and I I never missed it. 
And the last card is uh, Skyburn. Okay. Um, this is target Fire Kings you control and then destroy that many cards your opponent controls. Um, so this card's like one of the best cards playing into a board because this Ponix can, if you already have Sanctuary, Ponix can search this and then you can just like spam the board with Fire Kings and then go activate and then destroy all their stuff and then you'll float. Hmm. Um, this is also like one of the best interruptions to set because it also tricks, uh, triggers your XYZ because it destroys your XYZ, pops, destroys all the cards. And then your XYZ floats back into two dudes. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's the main deck. So the list I played for the tournament was 40 cards. Mm -hmm. Uh, really rare, I know. Um, but it's funny because I do want to play 41 with either Curry Kara in the main deck <laughs> or two Valor instead of, um, or two Valor, two Nib instead of three Nib. Mm -hmm. Because Nib is like kind of iffy against like rescue waves, mm -hmm. but it's still like decent card in the format to warrant playing it. So then for the extra, because it's actually my favorite part about this extra deck, because a lot of people are like, "Oh, it's the Fire King deck. You don't really like summon from your extra deck." But when you play the two Snake Eye cards, like it's crazy how two, including two cards in your deck makes it so you have so much more utility, um, or so much more consistent ways to uh, exploit your utility. Mm -hmm. So, the new card, Garunix Eternity, this card, custom card. Um, <laughs> when it's summoned, it's a dark hole, destroys everything besides itself, that's already crazy. Mm -hmm. Then it's detach a material, pop a spell or trap, that's also very strong. And then when it's destroyed, you summon fire kings from the grave, up to the number of materials this had. So, you know, you have like, let's say on your opponent's turn, you know, you use two, you use Garunix and Kirin to make it. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, they you write Geki. And then they go chain, I don't know, chain droplet, send a spell. You go chain Kieran, destroy, destroy everything. And then this floats back into two dudes for free. Mm -hmm. And so you constantly, it doesn't negate their effects, I believe. Um, I don't think so either. No. So you just go. Nope, it doesn't negate their effects. So you just float back into like Garunix. You float back into Arvada, mm -hmm. like Ponix. Like this, this card is just bonkers. Uh, I played Dingirishu as my flex rank 8. Mm. Um, this card in the mirror is really good because it sends, doesn't destroy. Uh, it's really good against like Curly when they go like, um, happy protect my friend. Um, it deals with the field spell as well. And then the mirror is really good. Unchained is really good. Tier is really good. Like, all in all, this card is really strong. Uh, and then the two best cards are Zeus. Never summoned it. Never thought about summoning it. The mm. first card of Banish Hall Prosperity. And the best card in the deck, Typhon. I think this card changes Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, I, I know it sounds like a weird pick to say, but I think... Because there's so many games I've won because my opponent had one big dude and low life points, and I just went, oh, Droll, Normal, Typhon, Bounce, Attack. Mm. Like, right. and then I think this card just fundamentally changes the way you play Yu-Gi-Oh. And I think this card is crazy, and I think every extra deck should play one copy. That's, that's my hot take. I agree. Um, then for the links, because this... The rest of the extra deck is all links because mm -hmm. I didn't play Super Poly. Uh, one Link Kariba, one Anima. Mm -hmm. um, Makes sense. When your deck plays level ones, you want to play these. This is for your Decode Hawk or Heat Soul combos. And it's also really cool because you can like put it in the grave, just Onyx, the Impermit, you chain, bring it back. Um, and then when, I think if you play Nibiru and level ones, you have to play Anima because you can just Nibiru, put it in the zone, the normal, uh, mm -hmm. absorb it, and then you um, you just out of it for free. Right. Then IP SP, um, makes sense. No, sorry, yeah, <laughs> these, these cards are yeah. SP is also one of like the best craziest cards I've written for a while. Um, Sunlight Wolf, Hita, Dark. Um, I think if you play Diabell Star, you kind of have to play these cards mm. because you know Diabell Star gives you access to, or let me read. I think if you play Diabell Star, you have to play this card, uh, Celine. And then these two are the best utility because you know, take the and then mm. Pearly, you take. Noir, Manadium, you can take like um the right heart if you play against Rescue Ace, this card's like amazing. Um Sunlight Wolf is for the combo play with the, what's it called? Uh Snake Eye Ash. And then these cards are all utility to like go for game. Um mm. Heat Soul, because there's certain combos. You use this less than you'd think you would, because there's a lot of time it's just better to end on like Sunlight Wolf and IP. Mm -hmm. Um Right. Yeah, this is like the better board to end on a lot of time than making the heat soul. But the option is there if your hand's like Bricky. You usually can make this if you have the Snake Eye engine. Mm. And then I played Oppo and Axis Code. This is just for game shots. This because with the Sunlight Wolf IP line, you just end on this under. Makes sense. So like, 
so you have an oppo for four sunlight wolf adding you back a fire and then reckless to raigeki as well so even if they like typhon you you can still just go okay make set up my rank eight you can't deal with it i'm just going to ding gear shoot you like that's another thing too this deals with typhon too so like mm -hmm. but yeah all in all i think this deck is really strong nice. i think it gets so much better with phantom nightmare too oh, because yeah. you have the, the the link three you have bonfire you have the snake bonfire eye after so um the the sneak eye i felt the pink guy you have that card you have bonfire you have the new link three mm -hmm. so i think this deck is super strong i think the wanted engine is like crazy i think it's a, probably the best engine we've had since the brave engine mm -hmm. and just i i think this deck is like absolutely yeah, I mean, I'm definitely agree with all the points you definitely made right there. I actually been testing out with some post Phantom Nightmare Fire Kings, and let me tell you guys right now, if you guys have not seen testing of post Phantom Nightmare uh, Fire Kings, I mean the deck is absolutely crazy. Not only crazy is if those cards are not Seeker Rare, or the the the, the level one might be, but if Bonfire is not Seeker Rare for whatever reason, then this card is gonna it's gonna be a more affordable route, and it's gonna be even more crazy. So. Definitely, definitely go ahead and make sure you guys check that out or stay on the channel because I'll definitely be posting up some type of profile for it. Uh, but yeah, man, big, big kudos, big congratulations to you as well. Going undefeated with Fire King Diabell Star, man. Is this the new goo moving forward? Is this what's going to be driving the uh, the uh, the Rob wagon, per se? I'm definitely going to try it. I, it's also because I've been, like, there's a ban list looming, and I think Pearly is, like, up on the chopping block, so... I think Pearly is more likely <laughs> to get hit than this deck, so that's why I'm also migrating towards it. There I'm go. gonna be trying. This will probably be the deck I take for events for a little bit. Um, maybe I'll play like one more event with Pearly, mm -hmm. just get out my system. But like, I think this is like probably one of the strongest contenders. And I think playing it now before all like the broken cards come out is a lot better too, because you get to understand how the deck fundamentally plays. So that way, when you right. add these like broken um, Snake Eye cards and you add the Link Three. And all those combos, you're you're already a, a step ahead of the curve. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's like week where Agov came out. Or no, no, it was like the Saya came out, and like you had all the broken Rescue Ace cards, like Emergency, and like <coughs> or, or mainly it was Emergency was in there. But you had a consistent way to get to the Hydrant, right? Because like the people that played the Rescue Ace for that those few weeks had such a um. A better understanding of the deck than the people that played Rescue Ace when Wanted came out. Because you knew how to play without the five cards. So that's the thing too, that you have to remember. Like I was talking to a friend of mine about this, because in Infernoble, right? I wanna say 70% of the time you play pure Infernoble, right? Like you play without these cards. Right. But you put in the hands that where you do have access to it, these cards, it's like your deck is like on a whole different level. So I think of knowing how to play this deck without the this engine is really important, the crutch, if you and know. I think, huh? They have the crutch. The crutch. Be because it's like, yeah, you know that, like, when you draw wanted, you're gonna win the game. But when you don't draw wanted, which you don't, you don't only, you don't draw that often because it's only five cards. Mm -hmm. And I think playing more of these is more bricky than <clears> playing <throat> less of them. I think playing the one of this is fine. Um, you already have that like advantage of knowing how to play the deck, which I think is more important than knowing how to play the deck when the deck is like broken mm -hmm. so and i think the deck is still like playable and can compete uh which it's it, i think it even hit got results in um Balania too where it was like three of them one of them i think it was one in 64 one in 32 and one in top 16. so or one in top eight i believe it was top eight or top 16 but the deck did perform well in <laughs> Balana. so we'll probably see some ycs's or probably we'll get some regional results too going into phantom nightmare but yeah. post, I think post Phantom Nightmare, this is definitely yeah. for sure. Yeah, definitely, and that's uh, opening weekend as well. So not even a full week's worth of testing to go into it. So I think Fire King is definitely going to be the next best thing, if not already the next best thing, guys. What do you guys think? In the, let me know in the comment section down below. What do you guys think about Fire Kings? Is it a tier one deck? Is it a tier two deck? Where does it fall on you guys' ranking? Let me know in the comment section down below. Once again, Rob, big congratulations and thanks again for coming on the channel. Uh, without further ado guys, hope you guys did enjoy. Make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.